what I am saying is that as long as an ahir is underage, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were underage, we were in slavery under the element, elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an head. The word of the Lord. I'm reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made for him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and the dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore with me about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we all have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. The word of the Lord. The theme that I have chosen is based on John's Gospel, where it reminds us the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. The Gospel writers four gospel writers fell in Jesus, his life, his birth, his ministry, and his mission. Each one takes very particular care in presenting the perspective. And the first three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called as synoptic gospels. The three more or less summarize the same thing as present with different lenses or different perspectives. And John's Gospel writer is a very unique writer. He presents Jesus in the perspective to address the philosophical part of the day. The philosophers who were speculating about the coming of God and the speculation about how God can take an ordinary form, how God can become flesh, how God can come and dwell. It is not an easy thing for an highest authoritative person to take up an ordinary thing. So it is unimaginable for a philosopher or a philosophical thought people to perceive that truth 
that how can God come down, come, uh, come down to this low level? That is what St. Paul also reminds, you know, he has come in such a way he humbles himself. In Telugu, for that particular word they use is Vittuniga Chesukone, Vittuniga. He has come to make himself Vittuniga. Vittuniga ante inka lo anato, manor ante ne, cheon rutlo lo, inka oka daridrata lo, okari koraku, Pratinijem Vainchi, Vari Papa Shapa Baramunu, I know it's code. It is like taking, uh, though he's innocent, he is taking upon all the sin, all the shortcomings of the human beings to demonstrate how much God loves us. How much God loves us. Devudu, the Lokani, Yento Premichana, the Mura Jando, Prasthavishan. God so loved the world. He has loved so much that he gave his begotten son. He gives us his begotten son, his only son. The precious thing. Can we leave our children at somebody's house? We don't. We take so many precautions. We make sure that the other family is equal to us. Or our children will learn something new. Our children will learn good manners. Our children will uh, learn some good qualities from the children. Otherwise, we try to draw a line saying that no, if our children are with them, they may get spoiled. We are so cautious. And look at God. He was not worried about what is going to happen to his child. He is only concerned about others. He is only concerned about human beings. He is only concerned about you and me. That is what here. John the writer is presenting to the philosophical world that in the beginning was the world. It is not the matter, it is not something else. It is only the world. That means the existence of God. The existence of God is trying to remind about the affirmative statement. He is reminding in an affirmative statement where he is powerfully reminding people this world coming world came into existence with the word of God, with his word, nothing else. There are so many theories we are reading nowadays, that earth has formed on its own, and human beings come from apes, and where are the apes now? Everyone should start with apes and to human beings. There are so many theories, there are speculative theories about the creation, but here, John's gospel writer is presenting about the Creator. Creator is the supreme being. His word is power. His word is authority. When he speaks, everything comes into existence. That is what we see in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. He has created out of nothing. The word which is used in Hebrew is tohu wa boku. So who above is emptiness. Nothing is there. Nothing is there. God did not invent this world. He has created this world. That is what the Genesis story reminds. God did not invent this world. Or he did not discover the world. But he has created the world and everything that is existing in us. And such a mighty God, such a powerful God, who has life, who is the source of life, who, who is the source of light and he sends that source to live among us to remind us that we are not ordinary people. That is the fact. By the birth of Jesus Christ very powerfully reminds us that we are created in the image and likeness of God. We are no ordinary beings. We are God's children. We are God's chosen ones. And we need to always remember this truth. And we need to be always grateful to God that we are being created in His own image and likeness. Let us turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22 to 31. Someone read that. Proverbs. Amitala Grandam, Elmiro Vajay. Avakyam Gurichi, Ikara Prasthal is to not. Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 22 onwards, 22 to 31. 
the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abound with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills there was brought forth. And this is how the power of writer is reminding about the wisdom. The wisdom is Sophia. The Sophia tradition is ascribed to Jesus again. Jesus is that Sophia. Jesus is that wisdom. And that wisdom was already existing before the formation of this cosmos. And that word is so powerful that with that word, everything is transformed. Jesus, in his ministry, he always evidenced these truths. And with one word, there was healing. With one word, the person comes back to life. With one word, the evil spirit leaves that person. Just one word, just one word will bring transformation. And that is the word which comes and lives among us. That is Jesus Christ. He is the source of transformation of the whole world. He is the source of transformation of every individual, every heart, every soul. He is going to take away the stone-hearted heart and he is going to give us the heart of flesh so that we may perceive and recognize his presence among us. This is what the word is very powerful. The word is always a powerful reminder that it is that word which came and dwelt among us. That word is bearing the form of flesh, that is Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 also speaks about the word. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. There he reminds that, you know, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession to this word that has become flesh. This word which was existing, here John's Gospel writer is presenting Jesus' birth, he is not something with the will of the human beings. It is Manushe Chala Toti Jarigina Toti Kriya Kadu Vani Ayana Ikara Pade Pade Nyapakam Chesthu Nal. It is Parishuddha Atma Valna Jarigina Toti Kharyamu. Atma Kharyalu Manushulaku Artham Kavu. Yehavaka Sammanamaka Jeevin Chaka Toti Varu Krahin Chaleru. Yesu Christu Prabhupada Jaganam Gurinchi Enno Prashnalu Thikamaka Bete Tattvanti Philosophy Su Ma Ari Sangam Lo Unai Chalamani Autun Atvanti Sandarbam Lo E Pratheka Mene Atvanti Suvata Raya Vadi Di Iti Manishya Chala Dwara Chelgin Atvanti Kari Mu Kadu Chari Rika Rakta Sambatta Mayan Atvanti Jaganam Yesu Prabhupada Kadu Iti Aadhi Andu Unna Atvanti Aa Vakya Me Ikara Sheri Vatari Ayi Nadu the beginning, the word which was there, that word has come and dwelt among us. It's full of grace and full of truth. It is that word which becomes flesh. It is Devudu, Adi Yesu Christu Prabhu, Aine Manayaka Pradana Yajakudu. Aine To Manamu Kalisi, Aine Sanidhanam Lo Manlan Manamu Imochi Chitruvani. Manayaka Aparadam Lanu Opuko Ali Ani. Every day of the last night, the Pasuk of Randakata, and the Nakon is my little Nalu Pandendo Vachin Water. But the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God is so powerful. That it will go deep into your marrow. Your marrow. It will go deep into your heart. The very thought. Here, John Scott, the writer, is reminding to give a solution to the redemption from the bondage of sin that the word is becoming flesh. And this word is so powerful, it is more powerful than a sword. It's a double edged sword which will go deep. Provided you allow him to come into you. Provided you accept him as your savior. Provided you 
allow him uh, or you function under his authority. Rakshana Grandam Pantam Lo Achai, Padamudo Vachanam Lo Uda Uta Chadukutam. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. There, John at Patmos in his vision is reminding us about this. Revelation 19, verse 13. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the Word of God. The Word of God. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the Word of God. I am a good person than the Kurchani, one of the people who teach the Nanaki, Margamu, is the purchase to preparing the way for us. We stand as worthy beings before the throne of Almighty. It is that word, such a precious word that God has given to us. We need to honor this word, we need to respect this word, we need to show obedience to the word. We need to have the word of God very personal relationship. We treat it very personal. The word of God is very personal to us. It is mine. It is mine. It is not somebody's. This word is the supreme, and this word has come for me from above. Therefore, I would like to glorify God and give thanks and praises to God for this blessed life which Jesus Christ has given to me. We need to always be grateful to God for these beautiful things. And also further we say that Sharira Dari and Chaptuna. A Vakyamu, Sharira Dari Urunchi, Eshya Grandam Yero Adhyam, Adnaru Sansuta, Isaiah chapter seven, words fourteen. Isaiah chapter seven, words fourteen. There he speaks about Prophet Isaiah is reminding to King Ahas. And there he is reminding about the hope which God has revealed. That is the sign of Emmanuel. He is going to be with us. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. The three gospel writers remind about that. Matthew gospel and Luke gospel writer reminds about the birth narratives. Especially in Matthew's gospel, some of our Sunday school children have memorized these verses. The virgin shall bear a child and he shall be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. That means God is always with us. He is coming and making a dwelling upon us. That word is becoming flesh. And this flesh is Jesus Christ. In flesh there are so many weaknesses. In flesh we are so weak. Sometimes we are not even worthy to glorify God. Sometimes we are not even worthy to stand in the presence of God. Sometimes we are not even worthy with the wicked things what we do with our flesh. But here Isaiah is reminding people several hundred years ago that you know God is going to give you a sign. The sign is that heaven will come down. That means Jesus will leave his glory and come down in an ordinary way. In Luke chapter also the same thing we are going to see. Luke chapter 2 words Seven, Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. That means Jesus' birth is very unique. Yesterday we celebrated, isn't it? With that one celebration, we have become so tired meeting friends, having food. And shopping around, and we have become so tired. 
that Christ is existing in me. We need to live that respect that yes, God is within me. Therefore, I need to respect my body. I cannot misuse this body for my pleasures. I cannot mis misuse these things for the worldly pleasures. I need to use my body to glorify God. As how Jesus comes down and he comes down to a human being level and he dwelt among us with full of grace and full of truth. He never committed anything. He never committed a sin. He never disobeyed the Heavenly Father's will. He had never gone astray as a young man or as a child. As a child, he was obedient to his parents. That is what we see in Luke's Gospel, the end of the world. Jesus was an obedient boy. He was very obedient. And further we see, he was humbly listening to their parents. He was listening to their parents. And further we see he was growing in wisdom and in stature, in the favor of people and in favor of God. That is how at a young age we need to dedicate ourselves to God. And as we grow, we need to attain that spiritual maturity and continue to live to glorify God with our body. Where we are carrying Jesus with our body, we need to question. Where are we going? What are we doing? What are we eating? How are we living? We represent Jesus in and through our life. And Krupa Satya Sampur Nuruga and Mana Majaro Nadu Ani Manam Dhamsa Devati. Krupa Satya Sampur Nuruga. He is that word and he is that flesh and now he live with full of grace and full of truth. Krupa Satya Sampur Nuruga. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. There St. Paul is reminding about the unity of body in Christ, about the unity, oneness, that we all belong to one family of God. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. But that is not the way you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. The truth is in Jesus. Yesu Christu Prabhuya Satyamu. He is the truth. The truth is that he loves us so much. He has forgiven our sin and he has opened the doors for us to inherit the eternal salvation. He has revealed to us. And that is the truth. Jesus Christ is the Jesus is the truth. So many people underestimate the power of Jesus Christ. They undermine the power of Jesus. And they confine him to a prophet. They confine him to a man who lived with respect. They confine him in such a way. Jesus means, oh, we know he was a great man. He was a very loving man. He was a very kind man. Sometimes when I ask some of our children during the birthdays, tell us about your friend who is celebrating the birthday today. How do they say? Oh, she is very kind. She is very good. Very good. She always loves me. She always shares with me. These are the things we do. The secular world also recognizes Jesus only in that level. They are not, they are not able to accept Jesus as their children. They are unable to look Jesus as the Son of God. They are unable to accept this truth. Even Pilate also asked Jesus Christ the same question. When Jesus says, I am the truth, he says, what is the truth? What is the truth? The truth is that he is the way. He is the life. And he is everything. Then Paul also reminds again, in his letter to Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin is where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. That means 
His love with which he dwelt among us, he has really given us that forgiveness. Krupa. Anam Krupa Kalam lo na, we are in the period of grace. He Krupa Kalam lo, Anam Jaisna Kondi Papa Kala Kum Anam Shiksha Kum Parakunda. Deodu Manam lo, Aya Krupa Dwara, Manam lo Chemistu na. Once he sat with verses, Krupa Vembadi Krupa, and he Kalam lo Kum Manam Adhano ne, Zechariah Gandam, Rendo Ajayan, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Can someone read that? Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. The promises what God made that is going to live among the people is fulfilled by the coming of Jesus. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Gion, for behold, I come and I will dwell uh, in your midst, declares the Lord. And many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in your midst and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Yes, it is a promise of God that I am going to come and dwell in the midst of you. I'm going to come and make my living with you. It is not an ordinary thing, is it? To go to somebody's house and take a living and help that family, is it? To go and live with them and help them. We think about so much when we take up a journey to a new unknown place. But here, God is coming to his own, but his own without recognizing. That is a problem with the world. He has come to the same creation who has created this. He has come back where he wants to restore the lost, but people could not recognize it. So many prophets, the philosophical world was unable to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. As an answer to those doubts, as an answer to those corrupted minds, here John Cast the writer is initiating to present Jesus to his philosophical world. Today we are very good in, in speculating things. We are very good with, uh, with wisdom and understanding to confront any uh, thing in the uh, philosophical world. John's gospel is the best gospel where you can present Jesus to such people. He has come and made his dwelling among us. The world became flesh and he dwelt among us full of grace and full of truth. Sakadana Grantham, Edo Adhyayan, Pandihena Vachna, Revelation chapter 7, verse 15. Here also, Jesus is giving a promise to all of us. The promise is that in Revelation chapter 7, verse 15, He says, Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Already the coming of Jesus occurred 2000 years ago. And now we are in a period of grace where we need to repent, we need to turn to God and submit ourselves to God and prepare for his future glory where we are going to be with him. Be prepared to seek and serve him. Serve him day and night in his holy sanctuary and also he is going to be our shelter he is going to be always with us even in revelation chapter 21 verse 3 also gives us this promise revelation chapter 21 verse 3 and i heard a loud voice from the throne saying behold the dwelling place of god is with man he will dwell with them and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. So a day is going to come. There is no other name, only Jesus' name. There is no other name which one which will give us salvation. It is only Jesus' name which is going to give us salvation. It is only in the name of Jesus that we have forgiveness of sins. It is only in the name of Jesus we have new life. Let us prepare ourselves for this new life. 
It is not only the preparation for 2022, but also preparation for the coming of the Lord. Preparing ourselves in such a way, acknowledging His presence among us, that He came and dwelt among us to forgive us, to restore us, and to give us the proper guidelines for our earthly life, so that we may be part of that eternal glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.